Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out This Day in Baseball, and enjoy the game. And he also broadcast 10 years for the Cleveland Indians baseball team. The last two years, he's been with the Boston Red Sox. And he's been the voice of the Red Sox. And Kenny, it's a pleasure to work with you. Come on in here and do this game. Okay, Kiwi, thank you very much. Bryles right now is taking his warm-up throws and ready to lead off for the Red Sox is the young fellow that the ball players sometimes refer to as Happy Jose. That's uh, Jose Tardiball, who is a wonderful disposition fleet little guy who can really run the bases and very often will punt his way on he has hit only two home runs during his american league career which includes uh, 463 games prior to uh, this season he's been stringing the ball well lately though and has done a good job in right field of course the red sox miss very much tony canigliaro who is here with them but who is not eligible to play in the series after having sustained an injury about six weeks ago. The story on Bryles, the St. Louis pitcher, probably the most interesting story on him is what he has done over the last couple of months. He has won nine straight ball games, pitching tremendous baseball. Tottable steps in, Mike Shannon, the third baseman, up the line, the outfield playing a step to it left, although Tarnable is a left-handed batter. Bryles gets his sign from McCarver and delivers. Ground ball out to second, off to the right of step. Javier throws the first in time. Tarnable hits the first pitch to the second baseman, and there's one out in the top of the first inning. Javier came up with a tremendous fielding play in game two against Elston Howard, one of the best defensive plays of the series. Dalton Jones at the plate from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He made 15 hits in his last 35 at-bats in the last two weeks of the season. Left-handed hitter takes the fastball low and inside, ball one. On the year, Dalton batted 289. He had three homers, 25 runs batted in. In the series, he is three for nine. Nelson Bryles throws, the pitch is foul back, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Bryles was 7-3 and three at home and 7-2 and two on the road. The outfield finds straight away for Jones. Right-hander works. The pitch is swung on a miss. Going for low breaking stuff on the inside. One ball and two strikes. Bobby Doerr, one of the all-time great second basemen of the Red Sox, coaching at first base. Eddie Popowski who's been with the Red Sox organization 30 years, coaching a third. Curveball is swung on a miss, first by three. Dalton Jones strikes out as Bryles gets him with a good high curveball. Two out in the box in first. There's the curveball I was talking about, Kenny. Both Nelson Bryles and Gary Bell has a real good overhanded curveball, and that's a tough pitch for a left-hander to hit. And let's see if Carl Yastrzemski gets any of those. Carl is three for eight in the World Series, two of the hits being home runs. They play him deep and toward right. The pitch hits him. It appeared to hit him on the left leg, and he is going down to first base. He tried to pull back out of the way, and he was hit by Bryles' pitch. So Yastrzemski becomes the first base runner of the game. The field is bathed in sunshine with the exception of right field where Roger Maris is in the shadows. With Yastrzemski on first now, George Scott comes up. Scott batted a solid 3-0-3 on the year. Now Dick Williams, the Red Sox manager, has come out 
and is talking with the plate umpire Frank Umont. A discussion down on the uh, third base side. Can I believe, did you remember yesterday, or a day before yesterday, the first pick for Jim Lombard to Lou Brock was kind of high and inside. And Jim Lombard was accused by a few of the Cardinal players that he was dusting him off. Come a little bit too close. Well, you notice, Nelson Brower did not bother the first two batters, but when the, the big one, Carl Strip, who came up there, he took him down pretty good. So now then, the umpire behind home plate, he is called Dick Williams, the manager of the Red Sox out, and Red Shandy manage the Cardinals, and say, it's time to tell him, let's not have any of this today. And Red Shandy is probably saying, well, look at here, why didn't you say something up in Boston? But that's exactly what they're arguing about, the knockdown pick of Nelson Brown to call your sister. Okay, and now the two managers go back into their respective dugouts, and George Scott, big, strong, right-handed batter, steps in. George in the World Series, three for seven. His fence gets first two men out. We're in the first inning. There is no score. The outfield is deep and straight away. Scott has good power to all fields. Biles checks and throws. Pitch is low and away. Gets away from the catcher. Throw down at second base. Out at second. Good stop taking the throw. As McCarver lost the ball momentarily, Yastrzemski took off for second. But McCarver threw it down to Maxfield, and they get him. And so, after a half inning, the score is the Red Sox nothing, and the Cardinals coming to bat. Okay, Pee Wee, Elston Howard has just thrown the ball down to second base as Bell concludes his warm-up throws, and now the 30-year-old right-hander is getting set to pitch to Lou Brock, who had a tremendous year with the St. Louis Cardinals, batting 299, had 21 homers and 76 runs batted in, and in the series is four for eight. He had four hits in game one. In game two, of course, the Cardinals had just one hit. Bell looks into Howard for the sign. The outfield toward right. Pitch is a breaking ball in. First strike called. On deck is Kurt Flood. Batting third will be Roger Maris. Bell is 6'1", 203 pounds. Out of San Antonio, Texas. Right-hander, rocks and fires. There's a fly ball toward left center. Yastrzemski going hard. It's passed him in the gap. Rock around first, digging for second. He might get free around second base. Petroselli with a relay. Throw to third base. Fake with the triple. Good lead. 
Bell checks and throws. Slander back to the mound. Throws out to second for one. Back to first for a double play. Gary Bell wasted no time as he turned and threw to Petroselli covering at second base. And Maris is hit into a 1-6-3 double play. And there are two men out in the last half of the first inning. St. Louis ahead, 1-0. And the applause is for Orlando Cepeda. The brilliant Cardinal first baseman batted 325 at 25 home runs and 111 runs batted in this season for the St. Louis Cardinals. Cepeda has had to fight a late season slump and he's 0 for 7 in the series. Gary Bell throws the fastball down low. Center fielder Reggie Smith playing Cepeda a step toward right. Yastrzemski straight away and deep out in left field. Bell into the windup. Right-hander throws. Breaking ball inside. Two balls, no strikes on Orlando. Cardinals lead 1-0 last half of the first inning. On what has turned out to be a beautiful day in St. Louis. This is the second World Series for Cepeda. There is action now in the Boston bullpen. Gary Wozlewski is warming up. The pitch is outside, 3-0. From our vantage point, we cannot see the action in the bullpen, but fortunately we're able to communicate and find out. And Wozlewski, who was up part of the year with the Red Sox, the tall, rangy right-hander is loosening up. Three balls, no strikes to count, two out, nobody on. Bell throws, Cepeda takes a call strike, and it's 3-1. Elston Howard working back of the plate. Scott is at first, Adair at second, Petricelli at short, and Jones at third. Yastrzemski in left field, Smith in center, and Tartable in right. Dick Sittler coaching at first base, and Joe Schultz at third for St. Louis. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Cepeda, it's a high pop-up. Back at third, Petricelli and Jones drifting over to foul territory. Jones makes the catch, and the Cardinals are out in the first inning. But they pick up a run, and so at the end of one, the score is St. Louis 1 and Boston nothing. He tried to reach second base after McCarver dropped the ball, but Tim threw him out. So here's George back up there again. Nelson Bryles throws, ground ball, hits the pitcher, goes out towards second. Javier gets it, throws the first, and gets him. A brilliant play by Julian Javier on a ball that was deflected back off Nelson Bryles, went out to the second baseman. He had to come in and barehand it and threw on to Cepeda for the out. So it'll go one to four to three. Another fine play, the second in the series, reeled off by the Cardinals second baseman, Julian Javier. Now, Dick Williams, the Red Sox manager, is out protesting the call to the first base umpire, Augie Donatelli. It was a close play at first base. One out and nobody on in the second. St. Louis leads one to nothing. Williams walking back over to the Red Sox dugout, which is on the third base side in St. Louis, as Reggie Smith prepares the bat. On the season, Smith, who's a switch hitter, batted 249, had 15 homers and 62 runs batted in. He's one for six in the World Series. Tim McCarver working back of the plate. Cepeda at first, Javier at second, Max Villa at short, and Shannon at third for St. Louis. Here's the pitch. Low and inside gets past McCarver. Ball one. Brock is in left, Flood is in center, and Maris in right. McCarver now goes to the mound, wants to talk with Nelson Bryles. The official scorers for the World Series, Bob Addy of the Washington Post, Larry Claflin of the Boston Record American, and Neil Russo of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. The lights are on here in St. Louis, although the sun is shining. Here's the pitch. Smith hits one deep but foul toward right field. Putting one out to the upper deck area. Reggie really came around on the pitch by Nelson Bryles. The umpires again. Frank Umont back of the plate. 
Augie Donatelli of the National League at first, Ed Rungy of the American League at second, and Paul Pryor of the National League at third. Pitch is a ball to Smith, low and inside. Down in the left field corner, it's John Stevens of the American League, and in right, Al Bollock, the senior umpire in all baseball of the National League. Two balls, one strike, one out, nobody on, second inning, one nothing. St. Louis, the pitch low and inside, three and one. Nelson Briles was born in Dora, California. He lives in Carmichael, California now. He had the best earned run average on the St. Louis staff this year, 2.44. Three balls, one strike. The pitch. Strike called on the inside corner at the belt. Full count. Briles worked 155 in the third inning. So he failed to reach the minimum 162 required to qualify for the earned run rating. Stocky right-hander takes a deep breath out on the mound, gets his sign, and throws. There's a little blooper. That is grabbed by Shannon. The third baseman, Mike Shannon, leaping to his left, came down with a little blooper off the bat of Reggie Smith. A very fine defensive play by the Cardinal third baseman. Maxville, the shortstop, was also going over toward the hole on the play, trying to uh, back Mike up, but he leaped high in the air and brought it down. So there are two men out, nobody on in the second, as Jerry Adair stepped in. That is 266 on the year, two for eight in the World Series. Right-handed batter takes a ball that goes in the dirt and goes past McCarver. Ball one. Frank Umont dusting off home plate. Adair, an Oklahoman, did an outstanding job with Boston after coming over from the White Sox this year. His average for the season, as I mentioned, was 266, but for the Red Sox, in 89 games, he hit 292. Here's the pitch. Curveball low and outside. Ball two. Adair ended the year with an eight-game hitting streak and a 351 average during that stretch. Outfield playing him straight away. Jerry hits the center and right a lot. This time he grounds the third. Shannon has it. Throws to Cepeda, and the Red Sox are out in order in the second. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on after one and a half the score. St. Louis won, and Boston nothing. Then hit into a double play, and Cepeda fouled out to the third baseman, Dalton Jones. So here in the second, with the cards leading 1-0, the batter is Tim McCarver, the catcher. McCarver, batting 295 this season, is 0 for 6 in the World Series. He is a left-handed batter with very good speed for a catcher. Pitch to Tim is a strike call. McCarver was the batting leader in the 1964 World Series, hitting 478. Got at least one hit in each of the seven games. Shannon is on deck, and Javier will be up third. Uses a closed stance, crouches at the plate. Bell throws a strike called on the outside corner. McCarver turns and questions Husky Frank Umont. Two strikes to count on McCarver. Looks into Elston Howard for the time. Right-hander into action. The pitch. Fastball outside. One ball and two strikes. St. Louis leading by a score of one to nothing as we start the last half of the second inning. The right-hander throws. McCarver checks the swing and takes the ball. Tim had a notion, but held back on it. Bell, over the years, has averaged 6.4 strikeouts per nine innings during his American League career. He averaged just over six this year. He's been used as a starter and a reliever with Cleveland. Gary delivers. There's a shot down ball through into center field for a base hit. And McCarver takes a big turn and holds it first. 
Tim McTarver leading off the second inning for St. Louis. Drills a single. Petroselli went to his left to try to make a play, but there was no chance for Rico as the ball went past him into center field. So the lead man is on for the Cardinals in the second. They lead 1-0, and Mike Shannon, right-handed batting third baseman, comes up. That was the first hit for McCarver in the World Series. Shannon is 2-for-7 in series competition this year. The pitch to him. Drive deep toward left field. This is back. It is gone for Holman. to go to his bullpen. 
yards, 0 for 3 in the World Series. This is his 10th World Series. Pitch dealt and is a strike called on the outside corner at the knee. We're in the third inning. St. Louis leads 3 0. Red Sox up with one out and nobody on. Curveball is low and outside, and the count is 1 and 1. Hits the ball to right center field a lot, and Flood is playing him accordingly. Pitch to Ellie is taken away, ball two and one strike. Howard has helped the Red Sox young pitching staff a great deal since coming over from the New York Yankees. Bryles gets the sign, right hander throws, shot down ball, pass to Tater, going down into the right field corner. And Howard is on with a single as Maris fires the ball into second. So with one out in the Boston third, Elston Howard gets the first Red Sox hit of the ball game. And now George Thomas is up to bat for Gary Bell. Thomas, a right-handed batter who's been around some and has been with the Red Sox the past two years as a utility performer. Average this year of 2.13. And Bryles getting ready to work to Thomas. Howard taking it very cautious lead away from first base. The pitch is outside, ball one. Thomas attends Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan in the offseason, but he was born and brought up in Bloomington, Minnesota, the home of the Twins. Bryles at the belt. Right-hander throws, Thomas fouls it back. The count is one and one. Gary Wozlewski continues to warm up out in the Boston bullpen. Young man who won 19 ball games for Toronto last year. Paul Lindsay Sinker Ball Specialist. Boston nothing, one out, one on, and the Red Sox third. McCarver out a couple of steps and hollering something to his pitcher, Bryles, and now Tim comes back at the plate and gets in the crowd. Flood moving over a little bit to a straightaway center from left center out there in center field. The set in the pitch. Thomas takes a strike call, belt high fastball on the outside corner. One and two. Again, for late tuners in, it's turned out to be a very nice day in St. Louis after a rainy, misty, foggy morning. The lights are on, but they don't really have to be. One ball and two strikes to count. We may get rain later in the day, but it's supposed to clear tomorrow. The one-two delivery... Nice stop by McCarver, no advance by Howard as the ball was low and outside and Tim made a backhanded stab and prevented it from going by. McCarver working back at the plate. Cepeda at first, Javier at second, Maxville at shortstop and Shannon at third. Brock is in left, Flood in center and Maris in right for St. Louis. Two balls, two strikes, the count to George Thomas. Jose Cartable is on deck. Shakes off a sign. The right-hander is working a little more deliberately now. The pitch, low and outside. Three and two on Thomas. One out, one on, and the Boston third. Cardinals lead three to nothing. As St. Louis picked up one in the first inning, when Brock tripled and Flood singled him in, and in the second, Shannon had a two-run homer. to the belt for pause and the pitch. Swung on it, missed, strike three. George Thomas strikes out 
the second strikeout for Bryles, and there are two men out with Howard on first and the third. Jose Tartabal is at the plate. Red Sox right fielder grounded out the second base in the first inning. Cepeda holding against Howard at first. Tartabal hits the ball to all fields, a spray type hitter. Here's the set. The pitch. There's a fly ball into right center field. Flood coming hard. Makes a fine running catch. Kurt Flood makes a splendid running catch at Tartable's fly ball. The Red Sox are down in the third. No runs, one hit, one left. And so after two and one half, it is St. Louis three and Boston nothing. Wazluski throws a fastball at the knee for a strike call. If he is on, Wazluski can be very tough, and especially because of his easy motion, he's a hard man to fathom at the beginning. Flood is on deck. Maris will bat third. Pitch changeup is spotted foul, and it's strike two on the speedster Lou Brock, who led the National League in stolen bases for the third year in a row with 52 this year in 70 attempts. Lou is playing in his second World Series. He had 300 in 1964. And many fans and many experts have predicted he would be one of the heroes of this one. Pitches high to him for a ball. One and two. Brock hit more home runs in this ballpark than any other Cardinal. 13. Wazluski with a big sweeping motion throws a fastball that swung on a miss and Brock strikes out. That's the second strikeout for Boston pitching as Gary Bell had one. Bell worked a total of two innings, allowed five hits and two runs, and had one strikeout. One out in the last half of the third inning and Kurt Flood is up. He drove in the first St. Louis run in the first inning with his sharp single of center sending home Brock. But Luke throws, there's a ground ball to second. Eh? They are in and up with it. Easy play for him, and he throws flat out at first base. Two out in the third. Roger Maris now. Roger hit into a 1-6-3 double play in the first inning. Bouncing one back to Bell, who threw to Petroselli covering second, and then they pulled the double play at first. St. Louis three, Boston nothing. Two out, nobody on last half of inning three. Second baseman Jerry Adair is set back on the grass. The outfield playing Maris to pull. And the pitch. Fastball tails away. Ball one. Third base coach Joe Schultz hollering encouragement into Maris. While Lucy fires. Pitch is a check swing foul back to the screen. One and one. 3.30 down the lines in left and right field. 386 to straightaway left and right. 414 to dead center. One ball, one strike to Roger Maris. Wazluski throws. Breaking ball, low and inside. Two and one. Elston Howard catching for Boston with Scott at first, Adair at second. Petrus Elliott short and Dalton Jones at third. Yastrzemski and Smith and Tartable from left to right in the outfield. High fly ball into right center field. Smith and Tartable converging and it is Tartable who makes the catch retiring the side. The Cardinals go in order. No runs, no hits, nobody left on at the end of three. St. Louis three and Boston nothing. Dalton Jones is off for Boston. He struck out swinging in the first inning. One of two men is and a strikeout victim for the hands of Nelson Bryles. Right-hander throws a curve that chops foul off the first base side on the ground. Strike one. Jones does not strike out very often. He is now three for ten in this World Series. Yastrzemski is on deck and Scott will follow. St. Louis leading three nothing. Bryles at the beginning of this year was the long reliever for the St. Louis staff and what a job he's done since he's become a starter. There's a curveball lined into left field. It's dropping in for a base hit in front of Lou Brock. 
And Dalton Jones, he dropped the Boston fourth inning with their second hit, a single. Runner at first base and nobody out. And the batter is Jastrzemski. Jastrzemski was hit by a pitch in the first inning as Vile hit him with a low inside delivery. Carl, three for eight in the World Series, including a couple of home runs. And he now has two assists in the series in left field and has made a couple of brilliant plays in the field. at the belt. The pitch. Yastrzemski fouls it back to the screen strike one. And he took that savage touch that he's employed all season long. Two-time American League batting champion. Won it in 1963 and again in 1967. But in a much more authoritative way this year with a 44 home run and he led the league and runs batted in. Bryles ready. Right-hander throws. Jastrzemski looks at a curve inside. And the count goes to one ball and one strike. Dalton Jones at first. Nobody on. Uh, nobody out, rather, in the fourth inning. St. Louis with a three to nothing lead. With Jastrzemski up, Cepeda, although playing close, is not right at the bag on Jones. Scott and the Red Sox in the fourth. 
No runs, one hit, and nobody left on. So after three and one half the score is St. Louis three and Boston nothing. Cepeda fouled out to third baseman Dalton Jones in the first inning. Wazlewski throws. There's a high foul coming back out to the reach. Two strikes to count on Cepeda. Tim McCarver is on deck, and Shannon will be up third. This is the last of the fourth. Cepeda's leading it off. The Cardinals have a 3 nothing lead. The pitch is swung on and missed. Strike three. Cepeda is out, and he's now 0 for 9 in the World Series. The second strikeout for Gary Wazlewski, and it brings up Tim McCarver, who broke the ice for himself in the second inning as he left the inning off with a single and scored the second St. Louis run, coming home ahead of Shannon when Mike Homer. Elston Howard sends the sign out. Wazlewski throws, and the pitch is low and inside, ball one. The 478 average that McCarver had in the 64 series was the best by a National League player since Pepper Martin's 500 in 1931. Wazlewski winds and throws. McCarver checks the swing and takes the ball outside. Ball two. McCarver, a left-handed batter. As we mentioned earlier, he has very good speed. He led National League catchers in stealing in 1967 with a total of eight. Here's the 2-0 pitch. High foul drifting out of play into the lower seats off third. Two balls, one strike. Working behind the plate, Frank Umont of the American League, Augie Donatelli of the National League at first base, Ed Rungy of the American League at second, and Paul Pryor of the National League at third, John Stevens of the American League down the left field line, and Al Pollock of the National in right. The 2 1 pitch. McCarver hits the ground ball, shot to his right and with it. Flips underhand to Wazlewski for the out. McCarver bounces out 3 1, two down on the Cardinal fourth. St. Louis leads 3 0. Here is Mike Shannon, who in the second inning hit a home run to left field to put the cards out 3 0. They had had a one to nothing lead, and he hit the two-run homer in the second. Wazlewski now has pitched to five men, has retired all of them. Tall, lean right-hander looks into Howard for the time. The pitch. Hit on the ground to a short. Petroselli to his right. Up with it. Throws to Scott for the out, and the Cardinals go in order in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. So at the end of four... It is St. Louis 3, Boston nothing. Okay, thank you very much. Smith popped up to the third baseman Shannon in the second as Mike made a very good play on a little looper that he had to go back and do his left on. Nelson Bryles on the mound. Right-hander fires a fastball low and inside, ball one. Smith will be followed by Jerry Adair, and then Rico Petroselli will be up third. St. Louis with a three to nothing lead, got one in the first and two in the second. The pitch to Smith is foul back out of play off the third base side and back of the Red Sox dugout. One and one. Smith is a switch hitter and from the left side uses a closed stance. From the right side, he opens up some. playing Reggie straight away. Here's the pitch to him. Curveball lined into right field. It's a base hit. Maris started to charge it but saw that he had no chance. And Smith leads off the Boston fifth with a solid single into right. Rogers started. Maris is a very fine defensive outfielder. There have been times in his major league career when that's been overlooked because of his power. Now time 
phone is called by third base umpire Paul Fire for just a moment, but we're ready to go again as Adair steps in. The second inning in a row, the Red Sox have had the first man on, but they have not been able to solve files in the scoring department. Smith at first, nobody out on the fifth. Throw to first, Reggie is back safely. Bobby Doerr keeping a close eye on the Red Sox center fielder, Cepeda holding at the bag against him. Here's the pitch. Late foul back upstairs. Strike one. Adair grounded out to Shannon at third base in the second. St. Louis leads Boston by a score of three to nothing. Three, five, and all for the Cardinals. Zero, three, and all for the Red Sox. Nelson Bryles ready to work. Curveball is popped up. Down to it, first base. Cepeda coming in and right in front of the bag, about 10 feet in front of it, just in fair territory, takes the pop by Adair. So there's one out in the fifth inning for the Red Sox, and the batter will be the shortstop, Rico Petroselli. Rico five to left field in the third inning. This fellow has shown steady improvement. His RBI totals in the last year have gone from 33 and 65 to 59 and 66. Up to 65 this year, and he was the shortstop in the All-Star game. Here's the set. Pitch is a curve over for a strike call. The name Petroselli in Italian means little rock, and that is what Petroselli has been in the Boston infield. He's been a very steady influence with the glove. One out, one on him, a fifth. Here's the set. Throws, Rico swings and misses, strike two. Petricelli had a very good finish last year and again this season. Comes from Brooklyn, New York. Bryles taking a little extra time now. Here's the pitch. There's a check swing fly ball into short center field. Flood dashing. He's got it. Throw to first base. Smith gets back in time. Chris Flood, who can fly, just did. He came racing in on a fly ball by Petroselli. Rico is trying to hold back in the swing. And the speedy center fielder tracked it down. Two men out. Smith on first base in the fifth inning. St. Louis ahead three to nothing. Elston Howard at the plate. Howard single to right field in the third as one of the three Boston hits. Here's the pitch. Low and outside, ball one. Howard had the thrill of hitting a home run in his first time at bat in the World Series in 1955 against Don Newcomb at Yankee Stadium. Smith leading away from first. Bryles throws. Howard swings and misses on a high fastball, one and one. In the second game of the 1960 World Series, Howard tied a record by making two hits in one inning, a triple and a single, at Pittsburgh. This is his 50th series game. One ball, one strike, two out. Smith at first base. St. Louis leading 3-0. Right-hander Nelson Bryles throws. The pitch is foul back up on the screen.
Cepeda holding against Smith down at first base. Now the right-hander of the Cardinals gets ready. The one-two pitch to Howard. Strike called on the outside corner. He got it. The Red Sox go out in the fifth inning. For Boston, no runs. They had one base hit and leave one. After four and one half, St. Louis leads three to nothing. You know about it? Ken Coleman. Okay, Pee-wee, thank you very much. Julian Javier is going to be leading off against Gary Wazlewski, who's been very effective. He pitched the six men and retired all of them. If Howard hadn't had a base hit, he probably would not be in there now because the Red Sox are trying to catch the Cardinals, who have a 3 nothing lead, and Dick Williams naturally would have gone to a pinch hitter in this particular situation. Julian Javier has had quite a year for himself. He improved his average 53 points in 1967. He had a single to left field in the second, so he is four for eight in the series at the plate and has done quite a job in the field. Takes a fastball on the outside corner for a strike call. The Red Sox over the course of the season have shown quite an ability to fight back in the late stages, but so too have the Cardinals in winning the National League flag. A pitch is swung on a miss as he went out ahead of a breaking pitch. Two strikes on Javier. Maxville is on deck. The outfield playing straight away. Wazlewski delivers, pitches high, and the count is one and two.
or St. Louis three, and the Red Sox nothing. Back again to find God. Yes, Taylor going to the top half of six innings. The Cardinals scored one run in the first inning. As Brock opened the game up with a triple, Kurt Bush came right back with single. In the second inning, they scored two runs. McCarver single. Mike Cannon hit a whole run in the left field seat. But two runs, and that's where the score is right now. The Cardinals three, and the Red Sox nothing was going in the top half to sixth inning. And Gary Wozlowski hit quite a ball game. And relief of Gary Bell, retired nine men in a row. Talking about pitching great ball, Nelson Brown, first pitch. Mike Andrews takes it out into center field. Mike Andrews takes it in first Gary Wazlewski. And the Red Sox have something started here in the top half of the sixth inning. And the Red Sox fans have not had much to cheer about today. As it's been Nelson Brown's all the way. As he's only given up three hits. And so that hit right there by Mike Andrews. Leading off in the sixth inning here. Jose Carter ball. Little left-handed batter with a runner on at first base. Nelson Brown. Come set. Checks his runner over at first base. The pitch. Carter ball bunch one right back to Brown. He may have had a chance to go to second, but he elected to go to Cepeda at first base. And Andrews goes down to second. I believe that Brown could have got the man at second, but with the score three to nothing. He wanted to take no chance. Winding up. Are the Red Sox? It looks like he'll be the new pitcher. It's Lee Stang. Little right-hander. Had a real fine year for the Red Sox. And a hitter. Here's a fellow that put real good. Latter part of the season for the Red Sox when they had that tough battle to win the American League pennant. Got himself a base hit today. His name is Dalton Jones. Nelson Brown. Looking down at his catcher, Tim McCarver. Brown checks Andrews the second. The hit. Inside. Ball one. Dalton Jones hit 407 from August the 19th with 24 hits and 59 at back. Raising his average from 220 up to 289. So you can see when he, he got real hot when they needed him. Dalton Jones, Nelson Bowles, pitches in there for call strike one. One ball and one strike on Dalton Jones. Jones will be followed by none other than Superman, Batman, Tarzan, all rolled up in one. Carl Yusevsky. And he's made a believer out of me. He's quite a ball player. He doesn't beat through the bat. The beach in his field. Strong arm. Dalton Jones takes the back ball. Just got that outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Talking about Carl Yusinski. After he finished the game last Sunday with four hits. Four for four against Minnesota. I went up to Carl. I said, Carl, I've heard these players call you Superman. I'll have to agree with them. What a player. One ball, two strikes. Nelson Byers taking a little more time out there. Texas runner second. Here's the pitch. Ball hit out into right field. It's a base hit. Roger Myers coming in. Will Andrew score? Here comes the throw. He'll make it easily as he throws a little bit off the right. And the Red Sox break the ice here. They now trail by a score of three to one. As Dalton Jones gets a line drive single out in right field. His second hit of the day. And Dalton Jones did not go down to second base on that throw. As he was worried that the Cepeda may cut that ball off. If he did. So he's on his first base with one away. And Carl Yusinski is the hitter. Yusinski hit by a pitch his first time up and grounded into a double play. Four, six to three his last time up. Three to one, the Cardinals over the Red Sox with the top half to six in. 
Gisipski holds up that high. Foul, pitch to him, curveball in there. The call strike one. This is what Ken and I were talking about, that Nelson Brown has that real good overhand curveball, and it's a tough pitch for a left-hander hit to hit. We thought that they may throw Gisipski a few of those a day and try to keep that fastball out away from him. This is a big ball part. Of course, if he gets a hold of it, he'll hit him out of any part. That includes Yellowstone. There's a ball. Swung on. No contact. And Browse had something on that one. Strike two on him. On his first base, Dalton Jones. One away. Call your strength it's the hitter. No balls, two strikes. Let's see what Nelson Brown was supposed to him in this situation. It's empty. Brown's the plate a little bit more. He gets that bat high in the air. Nelson Brown, he's set. Looks over to run his first. Here's the pitch. Foul off the left. It's a good pass.
bottom half to Sydney. Butts burned down the third base. That's the fair. No one will get him, but it rolls foul. Lee Sang first pitch. The speedy Lou Brock. That would have served there no chance. We said you have to keep this fellow off the stack if you want to beat the Cardinals. That's not easily done either. Brock triple in the first inning. Struck out in the third. And here he is again in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The Cardinals lead three to one. Get some good help in this booth with us today. Tony Kubek. And no works with us. Jim Simpson on Major League Baseball every Saturday throughout the year. Sandy Colfax.
You can see what Brock can do to a ball club. Usually a pitcher will take a wind up when a man is on third, but not with Brock speed. They're concerned about him stealing home. The pitch to Roger Mayer. Swung on, it's fouled straight back. One ball and one strike on Roger. Defensively for the Red Sox, shot at first. And there is second. Texas Selly at shot. Dalton Jones at third. The Simpson left. He's not too deep, by the way. Reggie Smith in center, pull over right. Jose Carter ball in right field. Elson Howard the catcher, Lee Stang the pitcher. And here comes the pitch inside. Ball two. Blue Brock on his third. This is Roger Madison. Six World Series. Got a base hit to center field. 
And he grounded out his last time up. So he's one for two. First time up today. Left hand a hitter. He squats over that play. Lee Shank fifth turn. Curveball in there for call strike one. Elson Howard stole back to Stang. A little high. Stang had to jump butt. One strike on McCarver. On his first base, Roger Maris. The outfield. Swung around a little bit to the right. McCarver. Babble hit the ball anywhere, though. Roger Maris takes a good lead off first. The pitch to McCarver's too high. One ball and one strike. McCarver will be followed by Mike Shannon, who hit a home run in the second inning. The Red Sox, one run on five hits. The Cardinals, four runs on seven hits. When the bottom half the sixth inning lead, Stang comes set. Here's the pitch to McCarver. Started, held up, but the umpire stays in there. One ball and two strikes. Plenty of the time, plenty of time. McCarver crouches over the plate. Wraps that bat up the back. Lead. Here's the pitch. Curveball, little lazy looper. The third baseman, Dalton Jones, under it and takes it for the third out. And that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And the score after six innings of play is the Cardinals four and the Red Sox one. Evan, once again, here's the Wood. Nelson Browse looks at him. He's ready now. The pitch. 
Low and outside. Ball two. Noah Powers checks with his coach. Kapowski at third. The Red Sox have been trying to play catch-up since the second inning. Really since the first inning, because the Cardinals scored one in the first. Chuck baseball. Howard taking all the way. In there for call strike one. Two balls and one strike. Whenever you get behind, they like three to nothing. You can't play too much baseball. You have to sit and hope that someone get on and pick one here and pick a couple there and get back in the ball game. You can't hit and run or steal, really. Ball right back to the middle. Javier, the second baseman over there. Flips it over to Cepeda. And that's all for Elton Howard. That's all for the Red Sox here in uh, top half the seventh inning. But they came up with one run on one hit, no errors, and no one left on base. So after six and a half innings of play, it's the Cardinals four and the Red Sox two. Pitch in Mike Shannon leading things off. For the Cardinals in the bottom half the seventh inning. The first pitch by Lee Chang in there for call strike one. Mike Shannon. Is the only native of San Luis playing on the Cardinals. The umpire is cutting someone out in right center. It has a banner hanging over the fence. Get it out of there. That's Frank Dumont. Behind home plate. One strike on Mike Shannon. He had a home run in the second inning. Sang, fifth join. He must play down the third base line. He'll never get it.
brings up Dal Maxwell. Maxwell struck out and flat out in the right field. He's over two. Down at second base. Mike Channing looking around, checking to see where the truck stops. Pets the Billy. Dang. Looks back at Channing. Here's the pitch. Didn't have it, but called strike one. Dal Maxwell. One of the fellows that played a little league baseball. And his mother, they tell me, was his coach. She said she was pretty tough on him. There goes the runner, Mike Cannon. With the ball hit out in center field. They make it a double play. Reggie Smith's got a good arm. Here comes the throw. Did he get him? No. Nelson Brown, the umpire of the day, behind home plate, Frank Humont at first base, Doggy Donatelli. At second base, Ed Rungy. Third base, Paul Pryor. At left field on the line, Johnny Stevens. And at right field, my old friend, Mr. Al Barlick, on the right field line. See, we, uh, speaking of Al Barlick, Jim Longboard said after the game the other day, the one hitter in Boston that Barlick worked behind the plate, he thought that he was a great umpire. First time he'd ever worked uh, with Mr. Barlick back at the plate calling him, and Jim was very complimentary about him. Well, he's one of the finest kids I've ever seen. And he's been around for a long time. In fact, I think he came up about the same time I did in 1940. Nelson Browse, the hitter. They sang. First pitch, one on a miss, strike one. Now, it's always nice to hear a pitcher say that. Yes, it is. It doesn't always happen that way, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, Al gets on me a little bit. I used to complain and moan a little bit on those call strikes. Every time he sees me, you look at me and kind of make a face and say, Oh, no, that isn't a strike. Trying to imitate me. And I guess that did kind of beg a little bit. One strike on Nelson Brown. Lee Strang, six turn. Purple swung on. Miss. See, Lee, I imagine on that last one, uh, Mike Cannon must have been on his own going to third and moving over and stealing. Uh, he would have had that base stolen easily, uh, obviously. He had a real good jump. I don't think he fell down anywhere along there. So I believe he would have made it. Yes. Her ball outside. Ball one. The Cardinals scored one in the first, two in the second, one in the sixth for their four runs. The Red Sox scored one in the sixth, one in the seventh for their two. Four to two, the Cardinals over the Red Sox. And the bottom half of seven here, a little lazy looper. The shot shot Pepsi Shelly goes back. The dad calls for it. He takes it. And that's all for Browns, and that's all for Cardinals here. And the bottom half, seventh inning. The score here at first stadium, the Cardinals four, and the Red Sox two. He's 0 for 1. He's hit the series up at Boston. On the year, he batted 251. Good car, 16 home runs. Plenty of no contact. Nelson Brown takes his head. Here's the pitch. 
good curve ball, but it breaks too far. Now got a real good overhand curve ball. A little trouble getting it over. Four to two score. The Cardinals over the Red Sox. Joe Boyer. Pitch hitting for Lee Sang in the top half of the eighth inning. Brown. Hit. Grounder out to shortstop Maxwell. He's up to the ball. Flips the ball over to Cepeda. And that's all for pitch hitter. Go for it. The Cardinals flip that ball around the infield. Cepeda first. Javier is second. Maxwell is short. Shannon is third. Left field. Brock. Center field. Flood. Right field pass to catchers McCarver and Nelson Browns on the mound. All the way. Jose Cardiball. He go for two. Last time up, he sacrificed. Curveball, Danny in there, strike one. Cardiball will be followed by Dalton Jones. Jones has two hits. He's last two times up. And Ken Coleman brings you today's game. There's the ball hit out into center field. First flood back underneath it and takes it for out number two. Again, I can't see the reason why this ballpark could affect the Red Sox. No, I think it's a good ballpark for this Boston club because the uh, left and right center field, we have several men who can hit the ball out. It's a good, honest, uh, fair ballpark and certainly a beautiful, beautiful place. We're hoping to have one like it in Boston one of these days, few weeks. Down to Sandra. Hope you do. Don't join. That ball by Browse in there for all strike one. On Dalton Jones, Fowles looking down the harbor, takes his head. Fowles has struck out four. Here's the pitch. Back ball hit back through the middle out into center field. Base hit for Dalton Jones. This fellow looks like quite a hitter, Jim. He's always been a very smooth swinger, and when he's had the chance to play, he's done well. He's had some problems in the past defensively. This year he's gone in there at third base, Pee Wee, and he's done the job, and he may have just won it for a long time to come, the way he's gone of late. Now we see that Red changing for the first time today. He's going out to the mound to talk to uh, Nelson Bryle. No indication of any warm-up activity as yet, however there may be. In any case, Cepeda, McCarver, changing, and Bryles are having a conversation now at the mound. Part of which undoubtedly is how they want to handle Kaja Spensky or how they want to pitch to him. And the plate umpire, Frank Umont, is on his way out. This is the eighth inning. And with one out, the Red Sox have a runner at first base. The Cardinals are leading by a score of four to two. But the Red Sox have been chipping away as they come up with single runs in the sixth and seventh. The conference over, Yaz is in, and here's Seward. Nelson Brown would have liked to have kept that man off the of first base and have you 50 leading off. The top half of the ninth inning. One swipe here has been tied up. And he had a going, but he fouled it straight back. And what a cut he had himself. Ken, did he swing that hard last year? No, he didn't. Uh, he actually, as you probably have heard, and many people have, I know, during this winter, as Carl said himself, he trained like a fighter. Every day for 90 minutes, he worked out at the health club in Boston, and he had a trainer working with him, and he worked just like a fighter getting ready to fight. And he didn't put on any weight. He weighs about 180 pounds, but he's very, very strong, and he's got that whip-like motion now at the plate. He holds his hands high. Here's the pitch. Little swimmer out to Javier. He's up to the ball. Fits the ball over to the table. And the score here at Bush Stadium, it's the Cardinals 4 and the Red Sox 2. Herb Rock. 
Batting in the bottom half of the eighth inning. He had four hits in the first game up in Fenway Park in Boston. Of course, there was only one hit the second game. That was by Javier. He has two in this game. He has six hits in the third. First pitch by Dan Ozinski. Hit out into right field. That ball may be trouble. No, Reggie Smith will have it. And right center, Reggie Smith moves over and takes it. Ball was hit hard by Brock. Kind of a high fastball. He chopped down on it. Ozinski, kind of a turkey jerky sort of a fellow out there on the mound. Lots the arms and legs. Kurt Blood. He's up for his fourth time today. He's one for three. And a base hit. The center field's first time up. There's a fastball. It's too high. The ball one. Cardinals four runs on eight hits. Red Sox, two runs on seven hits. Osinski shakes his head. He's ready. Here's the pitch. Flores takes it. In there for call strike one. Frank Dumont behind the plate. Big umpire. Elson Howard moves out there. Here's the curveball. He slaps it down. It's too high. Two balls and one strike. As Howard walks over, receives the ball. Never thought we'd have such a day as we've had today. Kind of a misty rain all day at the game. So there's a ball hit down to the third base of Dalton Jones. Up with it. Over to George Scott and that's all for Kurt Flood. So Dan Ozinski retires the first two man to face him. Brings up Roger Maris. Roger Maris, one for three. Hitting a double play his first time up. Flat out to right field in the third inning. Got a base hit. Right field and drove in a run. And it's Ken Soldier. That's his third run driven in in the series. Drove in the only two runs the Cardinals got in the first. And Osinski first pitch is in there for call strike one. They say he drove them full ten. A little rounder, but they count it. There's a pitch in there for call strike two. The important thing is to get that man in from third. That's what he did. 0-2. Let's see what Ozinski will do with Mayer. No ball, two strikes. Howard, the catcher gives a sign. He moves outside. Little tap foul down the first baseline. Dick Ziffler, the coach at first base for the Cardinals, receives the ball. He is the son of George Ziffler. Many of you fans remember the St. Louis Browns, one of the greatest hitters of all time. George Sittler. Roger Maris. Pitches outside. One ball and two strikes. Two runs, seven hits for the Red Sox, one air. Cardinals, four runs, eight hits, no air. Roger Maris. Swings, tries to check his face, a little tap. He'll have to hurry, George Scott puts the ball though, takes him, but cannot get it. Well, here's what happened. Roger Burris tried to check his swing, get a little tap, a perfect punch down the first baseline. George Scott up with the ball. Ozinski over the first. But they couldn't get it. So it's a base hit for Rogers. His second hit of the day. The big pull. He still hasn't had a hit for the series. 0 for 3 today. Two away. Osinski looks over his hands. Here's the pitch. Ball hit out into the right field. Well, Orlando Cepeda 
Gets his first hit in the series. He was 0 for 10. That was a tying drive. Out off the right field wall. Right around that 386 foot sign. Boy, a double. Drives in Roger Maris from first. Makes the score. 5 to 2. In favor of the Cardinals over the Red Sox. Remember, fans, Ken Coleman and I will be right back here tomorrow for the fourth game of the World Series between the Cardinals and the Red Sox. Certainly hope that you can be with us. We'll be looking forward to bring you tomorrow's game and also the game Monday. McCarver, runner on his second base, is the hitter, McCarver. He stops it over the plate. Oh, Chris, he takes too much time. He backs out of there. Umont comes out. Kicks the dirt over home plate. A carve is one for three. Oh, Cincy looks back at Stapita's second. Here's the pitch. Back ball hit out to Max Miller. Oh, Chris is silly. It starts out. Flips the ball over the shot. And that's all for the Carver, and that's all for the Cardinals here in the bottom half of the eighth. Anyway, that one run, though, the Cardinals now lead by a score of 6-2. to two. With a lot of power in the right center and left center. And dead center. It's 414 dead center. Nelson Brown. Powell back straight back, but you're stuck. Good fastball. That remains. 0-2. Looks like Brown. Now to seek that fastball by shot. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher with a count. No balls and two strikes. Make a bad pitch. Maybe you thought George Scott. Here's the pitch. Curveball. Low and outside. One ball and two strikes. A perfect pitch on two. Not so. Makes the pitch so bad that the hitter will not want to offer. Keep it around that plate. Maybe two or three inches outside. Two or three inches inside. Here's the pitch, one and two. Curveball. Down to Cannon at third. The long throw over to Cepeda. That's all for George Scott. As the infield flips that ball around. Brings up Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith. Did hit a home run his last time. He has good speed. He left the club in stolen base. He has a terrific arm. He's two for three today. Got a base hit into right. Hit a home run to right field. He led the International League in hitting in 1966. This probably could be a real fine one. He can do it all. Nelson Brown, first pitch joint. That ball in there for call strike one. You'll see this happen quite often by the part of the game. Those hitters taking that first pitch, some manager will make him take it. Give that pitcher a chance to pitch. Maybe he'll get wild. Inside. One ball to one strike. Foul. Sometimes when he releases that ball, and it falls way over towards first base. Of course, it's pretty hard not to follow through and release that ball with something on it. That's falling a little bit towards first base. Most seven two. That ball inside the corner. And that's a call strike two. He had something on that one. One ball and two strikes. It's one away. We're in the top half of the ninth inning. It's his last chance for the Red Sox. As they trail by a score of five to two. Five runs. Hit it. No air for the Cardinals. Two runs, seven hits, and one air for the Red Sox. One ball, two strikes on Reggie Smith. Nelson Brown, he's ready. Here's the pitch. That ball is popped up. McCarver may have a chance. No, it's back in the sand. So the count remains. One ball and two strikes. This Cardinal ball club is far back as I can remember. Always had a club that likes to run. That goes back in the early 40s when I first came to the league. That was like Enid Slaughter, Enid Slaughter, Terry Moore, Ralph Keene, Dan 
unusual. Walker Clipper, the catcher. He has very good speed. Hold on like McCarver. Nelson Brown, one and two picks to Reggie Smith. That ball just missed inside. Makes the count two and two. And a great short stop. He's played. Here at the Cardinals, his career kind of parallel my career. Played against teams in the 39 Junior World Series at Rochester. And he came up to Cardinals, Marty Marion. Most of you fans will remember it. Two balls, two strikes on Reggie Smith. Inside, ball three. Foul gets on top of Reggie Smith. But now then he's come back and makes the count three and two. Bobby Doran coaching at first base for the Red Sox. Ed Sapowski coaching at third. Three and two to count on Reggie Smith. Has a real cold stance left-handed. He's a swift hitter. Right-handed, batting right-handed. He's wide open. Here's the three and two pick. He pops it up. McCarver almost knocks Reggie Smith down. And the umpire called Reggie Smith out. McCarver's going for the ball. Bumps into Reggie Smith. Of course, the catcher has the right away. Total, totals on the game. St. Louis 
five, ten, and zero. Boston two, seven, and one. Now down to Tony Kubek. Thank you, Kurt Gowdy. We're talking to the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Brett Shane. He's correct. Any thoughts in your mind of just staying right home here in St. Louis and not going back to Boston? Well, uh, we'd like to just stay right here, but uh, you never know. we got to play in a tough club over there, and uh, we'll battle them all the way. And maybe we'll go back, maybe we won't, but uh, they have a good ball club, and it's pretty hard to win three in a row. Uh, we have done it a number of times this year and won five in a row and six in a row. Maybe we can do it again. Brad, it's been a little indefinite as far as the people upstairs as to who is going to be your starting pitcher tomorrow. Will it be Gibson? Yeah, I announced it before the game that Gibson would be the pitcher, and uh, the young boy, the big, tall left-hander, will pitch Monday, definitely. That's Carlton. That's right. Bet you were glad to see Orlando Cepeda finally come out of it with a long double to right center field. Yes, he's been in a slump now for quite some time uh, before the season ended, but uh, the past three or four days right, before the season was over, he was swinging a bat better, and he was he's swinging a bat real good since the series started, but just hadn't connected with the ball, and... Uh, he you just can't hold a man like that down too long, and I think he's going to go and take it right now after that base that he got. Red in the very first inning, Nelson Biles hit Talia Strzemski with a fifth ball. There was a big discussion behind home plate. The three of you, Dick Williams, Frank Dumont, the umpire, and of course himself, what was it all about? Well, Williams thought that uh, Biles was throwing at him, and uh, I said he wasn't throwing at him, and uh, Dumont said that he was going to handle it himself. I said, well, that's okay with me, but I just want to let you know he wasn't throwing at him. I said... And if he had popped off in a paper like some guys did, that they were going to knock everybody down, then I would say he was thrown at him, but none of us ever said anything in the paper that we were going to knock anybody down or do this or that like a couple of the pitchers had said. So uh, I just said that he wasn't thrown at him. Red, you've seen the Red Sox, and you, of course, had the scouting reports, but now you've played them three ball games. You're up two to one. What have you noticed about the Red Sox that were, was not in your scouting report? Well, uh, the scouting reports are just about the same. Tony, you know, when you go over these scouting reports, they're great. Uh, you get ideas from them. Uh, some uh, pitchers pitch different, you know, and uh, your pitcher has to pitch his own game, and uh, that's the way we're going to do it from here. Uh, uh, the scouting reports, they give you the weakness of uh, the other ball club, and uh, it's great to have scouting reports, but Ryle has good control. It depends on the pitcher. If he has good control, you know that, Tony. They're hard to hit, especially if they got stuff on them. Red and the key to the Red Sox seems to be the stop your strength in that you did. Congratulations so much. We'll see you out here tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Red Chain. And now back up to Kirk County. All right. And here in the radio booth, this is Ken Coleman, and we'll continue with our wrap-up in one minute.
The Cardinals jumped out very quickly in this game when Brock led off the game by whacking it tripled into the alley out in left center field and Flood singled him home. So right away they had a one to nothing lead. Then in the second inning, McCarver led off with a single and Shannon came up with his home run. They picked up more in the uh, sixth inning on a bunt by Brock. When Stang tried to pick him off first, he threw wildly fast shot and Brock got all the way around to third where Maris singled him home. And in the eighth inning, Maris got a check swing single down the first base side. And Cepeda broke the ice for himself in the World Series by slamming a double off the wall in right center to send home the fifth Cardinal run. As far as Boston was concerned in the scoring uh, column here today, their first run came when Mike Andrews had a hit pinch hitting in the sixth inning was sacrificed the second and scored on Jones single. And Smith provided the other run with the home run. So, Pee Wee, that's uh, pretty much the story on this ball game today. And the fans now are starting to file out. And we have been, as we have mentioned a number of times during the broadcast, very fortunate in terms of weather. Because uh, when you and I get up this morning, I know that we had some doubts, a lot of doubts, about what uh, the situation would be weather-wise. But it's held off, and now we might get some rain tonight and have it clear tomorrow. But it certainly did turn out to be a nice game. Uh, and things don't look too sharp right now for the Red Sox, but I've said... And I've seen this ball club, and Lord knows you've seen them a lot more than I have. This when you get about ready to count this Red Sox ball club out. This is when they bounce back. And they're a real pressure ball club. They're cocky. And uh, not, cocky not to the extent where you would dislike a ball club right. like this, but they're very confident. And that's good. Well, you know, it's, uh, I think a good example was the last week of the season when they lost two games in the middle of the week to the Cleveland Indians and then had the Minnesota Twins come into town, a team that had beaten them uh, 11 times already in 16 meetings. They had to win the two games at the end of the season with the Twins, no matter what anybody else might do, and they were able to do it. So it's that kind of a ball club, and we were discussing it last night, uh, some of us, and uh, Tony Kubek included, and he said the interesting thing about World Series competition, and you've played in seven of them, Pee Wee, so you might be able to bear this out or not, but Tony said the more World Series you're in, the more you get to realize what it's all about, and the more pressure you feel when you're a youngster in it, and you've never been in it before, maybe it doesn't bother you quite as much because you're just kind of thrilled about being there, and it doesn't quite hit you so much. How do you feel about that? Well, I I discussed that a little bit with Tony today, and he said to you I was talking about that. I don't agree with him, and I told him so. So that playing in a World Series is always uh, kind of nerve-wracking to me, Ken, and I played it one when I was about 20 or 21, my first year in 1941, and I played one uh, in my career rather late. But it's a, it's a great thrill just to be in the World Series, but I think that I felt the pressure in every game and every series. I don't care whether I was young or whether I was old, but once the game started, I believe I lost it. Well, I, I think that would be very understandable, and I suppose a veteran might lose it a little earlier than, uh, than a newcomer, but I suppose, again, you get down to a matter of the makeup of the individual and how he reacts to that pressure, true. you know? One of those things. Right now, uh, we'll have the final total for you once again in just one minute. You know, most of the time, we get a, another look at Bob Gibson tomorrow, and uh, if I ever saw a pitcher that looked more overpowering than he did in that first game up there at Boston, uh, I can't remember when. He's not too much of a curveball pitcher, but he just keeps firing the ball hard. They're constantly for that inning. Well, everybody on the Red Sox ball club team he was very, very much impressed with him. Uh, for most of them, it was the first time they'd seen Bob Gibson, of course, and uh, they, they were very much impressed. The question I would ask you is that for a fellow who is, as they say, a power of pitcher to come back after so brief a time, uh, is he going to be able to throw that hard again tomorrow? Well, they say, Ken, I haven't seen that much of him, Ken. And another thing, as you said, they haven't, they have never seen Bob Gibson before. 
And the second time around, it may be a little bit more helpful to them. They may not be so odd by him. And uh, it should be a real interesting ball game. But I, uh, I think as you see, a power pitcher has to come back that fast. It may be a little tougher. Well, it might be. Now, Jose Santiago, of course, uh, he has been in some clutch ball games down the stretch for the Red Sox. And he'll get the nod tomorrow for Boston with Jim Onboard slated to work here on Monday. And uh, Santiago, in the early stages of the first World Series game, had trouble with his breaking stuff. He couldn't keep it down, and he has got to be able to keep it down in order to be effective. And uh, he started to get grooved after a while, and it's uh, very possible that he'll be able to come up with a strong form performance uh, again. One of the things that should not be overlooked about today's game, I thought, see, we from the Red Sox standpoint was the job turned in by Gary Wazlewski who uh, came in and picked three perfect innings uh, setting down nine men in a row. Has he been with the ball club all year? No, he hasn't. He was up. He didn't uh, go with us at the beginning of the season.